Yes? Okay. Um, thank you, Nana, for um, the invitation, everyone here at the museum and my co-panelists. Um, it's good to be here. And I will just get um, started, if I can. There we go. So I want to start with, can everyone see the yes. words? Okay. Um, I wanted to start with, let me just, okay. Um, start with a few epigraphs, um, which are all from June Jordan, and that work through this relationship between life and death, or nothingness and, um, 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 and, 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 and infinity, that I would like to um, 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 talk about, and particularly um, the excerpt from the first um, poem. Indeed, some of us did not die, and what shall we do, we who did not die? I don't know the answer to that. And then, on the flip side, look for the life, look for the reflections of the living. And then the third one is about black American English, and I would say other um, um, forms of black um, 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 vernacular, creoles, et cetera, and so on, being proof of existence and, um, 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 and, 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 and life. And what really strikes me about um, the um, June Jor Jordan's formulation there, which is similar but not quite the same as the, um, um, the Audre Lorde um, 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 quote that Nana mentioned, um, that we were never meant to survive, is that death is all present in relationship to black life, but how is death treated and lived with by those who did not die, right? Um, how is death an all-encompassing and all-surrounding um, um, phenomenon? Um, and I don't only mean physical death, but I'll go into, into this um, in, in a little bit. So what I would like to suggest here is to think about both an analysis of black life at the level of ontology, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a bit, um, because I think very often when we talk about black life, black culture, blackness, um, black identity, one of the things that tends to happen is we get uh, mired in this, um, what in the um, in, in this language would be the ontic um, um, level, the tangible, local, particular, factual, and the actual. Um, and I'm not saying that this is not important, but what I'm saying is that this is never all there is. Right? To put it in a slightly different language. Um, In order to, for the sentence Black Lives Matter to have any kind of significance, there has to be, um, or there have to be a series of structures that allow for black lives to not matter. And this is really what I'm um, interested in. I'm interested in thinking about what makes that possible and what makes that sentence um, 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 necessary, right? Um, because in some ways, saying that black lives matter, even though, of course, it's politically important within the, the, within the situation, also makes claims to black lives mattering in a system that has basically been designed to kill and annihilate black people. And I'm thinking about this um, in relationship to this whole question of being and um, ontology, this sort of larger, um, 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 th th this larger structure, and taking off of um, both um, um, Heidegger, right, Dasein, um, but also the kind of activist, um, quasi-academic formulation of um, blackness in German, um, Schwarzsein, instead of um, um, Dasein, and to really think about that as its own ontological um, formation. So part of the problem is that black life is made to appear ontic, which allows for the killing, expropriation, et cetera, um, um, and, and, and um, um, so on, because its ontological dimensions are not often um, enough um, um, discussed. And 
and to bring this back to a little bit more um, concreteness so that black life, which is of course tied to anti-black racism but never reducible um, um, to it, um, provides the conditions of possibility for the existence of black people, black diasporas, black culture, um, and whiteness and modernity um, um, writ um, 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 large, right? And not discussing this really leaves in place these larger um, structures that occur over and over again in slightly different um, 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 formations. And um, Sylvia Winter terms this mistaking the map for the territory and Hortense Spillers formulates it as um, 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 black being vestibular to culture, meaning that black literally gives birth to what we consider to be culture, both in the literal and um, um, in, in, in the general sense. And I'll just skip over this. <clears throat> Um, so, as an ontological formation, black life not only forms part of the modern West, but it's um, constitutive of it, right? It's um, vestibular to, um, 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 to culture. And then we have these historical formations, the Middle Passage, the transatlantic um, racial slavery, the plantation system, and the gendered racial um, um, terror um, erected on black people are not one-time events. Right? And I think that a lot of times in the discussion of both the proponents and the opponents of um, what one critic recently refers to, uh, referred to as um, black melancholia and other critics refer to middle passage discourse is that the middle passage is imagined as a historically discrete phenomenon, not as something that lasted even in a historically specific um, um, formation for almost 500 years and continues to occur on so many different um, um, levels at the borders of Europe, for instance, in the um, um, Medi Mediterranean. <clears throat> and to think historically here about um, the relationship between the abolition of slavery in the Americas and the large-scale colonization of the African um, continent through the Berlin Conference at the end of the, um, of, of, of the um, 19th um, um, century, and the way that all these structures are still with us. And when I say that they're still with us, that doesn't mean that they're the same, right? Um, that there's not this clear um, um, line, but nevertheless, those things were put um, um, that, that were put in place in the earlier um, um, periods still have very very clear um, 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 ramifications in the United States on the African continent in Asia and of course in um, um, Europe um, just a few examples here beyond the, um, um, the, the well-known ones here in the Netherlands, Mitch Enriquez, as Nana mentioned, but also Stephen Lawrence in the UK, Jure Jallo and Christy Schwundek in, um, um, in Germany, who were all killed by the police. <clears throat> so black life, um, Schwarzsein, or what Spillers calls the flesh, is that which has to be constitutively objected um, and appears as this negative ontological um, ground, but it can't ever really be included in the Western world order as, um, 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 as um, um, such, right? This is why black lives do not matter, why there are no humans involved. And in order to concretize this a little bit, I want to talk um, for um, the remainder of, of my time about um, Afro-Scottish writers, um, Jackie Kay's um, novel, Trumpet. She's primarily a poet, um, but she's written a few novels and an auto, um, um, autobiography. Has anyone read the novel? No? OK, good. As I always say, the rest of you, shame on you. You should read the novel. It's um, 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 amazing. And <clears throat> And many stories could be told about what the covers, how they're trying to frame um, the, um, 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 the novel. And just to give you a very, very brief um, summary of the novel, um, the novel is loosely based on a um, real story of a white um, American um, jazz musician who um, after he died, it emerged that he was assigned the female gender at um, birth. And what Jackie Kay does is that she transposes this 
to the context of Scotland from the 1950s to the 1990s, with the main character, um, Joss Stone, being um, um, a black um, Scottish jazz musician who, um, at the before the novel even starts, is dead. And what the novel presents is all the different characters coming to grips with the secret of his gender identity. And this is primarily his white wife um, and um, their, um, their adopted um, um, also um, black um, um, Scottish son. And then there's also a journalist who's trying to write a um, salacious biography of, um, of, 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 of Joss um, Stone. And then there are also um, more marginal characters so that Joss Stone, um, the, um, 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 the, uh, the character, becomes this kind of mirror of everybody coming to grips with their own gender, sexual, and racial identity within this, um, um, with, within this um, 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 context. And what I, what I really appreciate, among many, many other things about the novel, is that it really clarifies one of the main ways in which black lives have been made to not matter is by making certain kinds of gender and sexual identities um, be the entry ticket to proper personhood or humanity, right? And um, one um, and, and what the novel really um, 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 re really does is to show how. Um, making that matter doesn't necessarily necessitate having to repeat those mistakes and asking for um, um, inclusion in the form of um, 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 Joss's um, life story. So Joss Moody, born Josephine um, um, Moore, and there are a lot of um, subtleties about the novel um, because it's set in a moment where trans activism and trans identities are not quite um, 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 as um, prominent as they are um, as, as they are now, it really leaves open whether um, Joss is a queer black woman, a trans man, or a um, um, or, or a combination of, um, 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 of, of of both. And and that's also mainly due to the fact that Kay never really goes to the lengths of actually trying to channel Joss, um, 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 Joss Moody's um, um, voice, right? <clears throat> and what really, really strikes me about the novel, and when I first read it, and um, I'm repeatedly um, I'm reading it, is that this is a novel where the death is, um, um, occurs in mid-1990s Scotland, where black people are not, um, I mean, clearly there were black people, not exactly plentiful, and no one makes a mention of his race. All the debate about his um, nonconformity gets channeled through and displaced onto the, and I'm putting this in quotation mark, the secret of his um, gender um, um, identity. And the only person that was privy to the secret um, before his um, um, death of the characters that we encounter is his, um, 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 is, is, is his wife. <coughs> So my question was and is, what role does Joss's blackness play um, in the will to know and their vi therefore violently determine the mimetic correlation between his anatomy and, um, um, and, 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 and gender um, 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 expression? And to go back a little bit, <clears throat> that oftentimes, the way that these discourses are, um, or that, that these discourses exist, is that there's either an assumption of deficit or surplus in terms of black genders and sexualities. The important thing, of course, being that conformity to what is normative in terms of gender and um, sexuality is not um, 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 is, is, is not a um, um, given. So that we have either the um, this idea of black culture, black life, being not queer, being not um, 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 trans, being hyper-masculine, being hyper-heterosexual, et cetera, and so on. Or then there's the kind of excessive queerness and transness of, um, um, of um, black life. And I'll give you a few examples. Um, in terms of this, um, how this plays out in the, um, 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 in, in the public, um, um, in, in, in the public arena, that many of the debates around questions of gender and um, um, sexuality are um, 
conducted through the conduit of not black people, but black bodies, right? That they're integral to making these discussions um, 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 happen. And here, just an example of um, Castro Simania, the South African um, um, uh, <coughs> sports figure. And here you clearly see how this violence of making her conform to a stereotypical idea of what femininity um, is. And there, there was all this kind of there were so many different ways, both officially and unofficially, that her status as a um, woman and as a female athlete were, um, 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 were, were challenged during this um, period. And this is sort of the kindler, gentler version, supposedly. But it's also about, um, <clears throat> about this violent imposition of these normative, normative ideas of not only gender, but also sexuality, literally onto her, um, um, on, on, onto her body. And another example here, um, these were billboards that um, existed in um, several spaces in the United States a few um, um, years ago. And even though gender and sexuality are not mentioned, the implications are really clear. Also thinking about the discourses, of course, around um, welfare motherhood that always also imply an excessive um, sexuality at the same um, um, time. And to put it really, really crudely, and, and thinking about this in relationship to um, um, Kay's novel, that there is this long-standing violent fascination with not only black people's sexuality, but genitalia, right? Um, also going back, I'm forgetting the name to the, to the piece in the, um, um, in, in, in the exhibit upstairs. So that there, what happens here is that there is this will and this um, impetus for black bodies to be visible in very, very particular ways and therefore to be knowable and in the end to be killable. And we also see this in the, um, um, <clears throat> in the way that um, black trans women in the United States are not only killed excessively, right, but also in the ways that they that, that they are killed. That there's this hyper violence attached to this kind of policing of black bodies and um, gender and um, sexual um, 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 conformity. And let me just go here, so that what we get here. as I said earlier, is this disconnect between normative genders, sexes, sexualities, and black life. And this is one of the main ways in which what we call racism or anti-black um, racism operates. And I don't have time to go into it, but if we think about the history of the Venus Hottentot, quote unquote, um, Sarah um, Bartman, or the history of lynching, we also see this excessive focus and this um, fundamental privilege of having access to um, and therefore making visible black bodies, black genitalia, um, um, black genders, and, um, um, and um, 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 sexualities. So that this obsession with Joss's um, 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 embodiment um, of um, what is perceived to be non-normative gender and, um, um, and, and, and sexuality is not only about the gender and sexuality, it's also very clearly about him being a black trans man and or a black queer woman in that um, 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 in, in, in that um, um, in, 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 in that context, and clearly the two are not mutually exclusive. But very often there's this way in which, um, in, in the criticism, for instance, on um, Kay's, Kay's novel, the question of race gets displaced onto Joss's um, 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 transness. And here we see, outside of the um, familial bonds, this is the, um, um, the doctor that has to, and there's also a series of these short chapters, um, um, vignettes, that depict how state officials or those operating um, um, as state officials respond to Jasa's um, death. And this is um, Dr. Krishnamurti, who um, gets out her red pen, and we see not only the, um, 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 the, the surveillance, right, of Joss's 
um, 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 gender expression in, um, um, in, in, in his death, but also the violence that that red pen um, 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 signals. And I mean, there's also an interesting thing here in which Dr. Krishnamurti, by making um, 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 Joss um, non-normative, also as a non-white um, um, person within that um, context, makes herself part of the um, um, uh, of, of, of the um, um, of the British um, um, state, right? Um, that that allows her um, entry. But that's not really what I what I want to talk about. Um. <clears throat> So, as I mentioned, um, Joss and Millie have an adopted Afro-Scottish child, um, Coleman, who's also struggling in the aftermath um, of his um, um, father's death, not only with his um, um, racial um, identity, but also with his, um, um, with, with his um, 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 sexual identity. As I said, everyone does it. For instance, Millie, even though she knew, um, quote unquote, um, asks herself afterwards that now that everyone um, else knows that Joss was born as a woman, does that make her a lesbian? And they had been married for, I think, 30 years. Um, so everyone's life and identification, um, 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 identification um, changes. But what I really want to focus on in this interanimation between gender and sexuality and um, um, diasporic blackness, black life, is this kind of disconnect and, um, 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 and, and, and dislocation that all of the, um, um, of, of the characters here um, feel, um, among, um, um, foremost among them, Coleman. <coughs> And here, um, this is a conversation that, um, um, that Coleman um, narrates from, um, from, from, from memory with his, um, with, with his father. And, um, and this is really what got me started thinking about the novel in relationship to these um, larger um, questions. So he said that they didn't belong anywhere but to each other. He said, you make up your own bloodline, Coleman. Make it up and trace it back. Design your own family tree. What's the matter with you? Um, haven't you got an imagination, right? So what the novel really highlights is what do you do in the death, the absence of a family tree in a space where you're, you don't only belong, but you're not supposed to exist. And what um, 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 the novel um, does so wonderfully is to make that into a possibility and not, um, and, and, and not necessarily only a um, burden. It doesn't shy away from the violence that is inherent um, um, in, in this, but it really looks at this idea of self-invention um, in terms of gender, in terms of, um, um, in terms of sexuality, and in terms of um, um, the, um, um, the family tree. In, um, in, in, in very um, interesting um, ways. <clears throat> and there's another secret, quote unquote, in the novel that Coleman constantly pesters his father about, which is about Joss's father and how he came to Scotland. So um, 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 Joss at some point tells him this um, 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 story, and they're the stock diaspora stories, right, um, of the military, of being a laborer, et cetera, and, um, um, and, 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 and so on, and ends this, and any of these stories might be true. And this is really what um, um, Kay does in, in the um, novel, is to say, what if any of these stories might be true? How can we use this as a moment of telling different kinds of stories about ourselves? <clears throat> And here, because Jazz is a um, um, jazz musician, there's also a reference to the kind of constant self-invention and renaming of these male um, 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 jazz, um, um, j jazz musicians. And in many ways, Joss looks to these jazz musicians because he doesn't have any other um, 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 models for a particular kind of black masculinity um, 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 around him. So it's this tension that is also a possibility between unbelonging and reinvention, right, for those who did not die. And Joss leaves a letter to Coleman and, <clears throat> and in it he says here, um, I've told you everything, my father came off a boat right 
enough. And um, the larger or, or the, um, 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 the longer scene also echoes um, Olada Equiano's um, um, slave narrative, and again, insisting on making this not knowing the exact circumstances of origin, in this case, of the family tree into a um, 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 possibility, right? What else does Coleman need to know besides the fact that his grandfather, uh, who's not his biological quote unquote grandfather to begin with, came off the boat? <clears throat> and this is Joss talking about his father and the loss that he, um, 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 that he encountered. And remember that Joss's father is first generation. He comes to um, Scotland when he is a um, teenager. But even for him, his country is lost. It only exists as a haunting, as an absence, as a mode of death. So, how do we make this, um, the constitutive ungendered displacement of black life from origin belonging livable um, as a possibility for the present and the future? And Saidiya Hartman, in an essay, Venus in Two Acts, talks about, um, and the wording here is really important, the intimacy of our experience with the lives of the dead. Not the intimacy with death, but the lives of the um, um, dead. And continuing there at the bottom, um, the precarious lives which are visible only in the moment of their disappearance. And again, this is really borne out in, um, um, in, in, in the narrative and also the structure of um, Jackie Kay's, um, 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 Jackie Kay's um, 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 trumpet, right? Um, what does that intimacy entail? How do we think about this death as constitutive um, <clears throat> but not all there is. And here we get to um, our friend um, Heidegger, and I'll, um, I only have a few minutes, so I'll, I'll breeze through this a little bit. <laughs> the upshot, or the, the bottom line, so to speak, um, in Heidegger is that um, for him, true subjects cannot experience the death of the other, right? Um, in any way, um, 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 authentically. But experiencing one's own death is the moment that we have access to this true, authentic um, um, Dasein and, um, um, and, 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 and being. So thinking about this in relation to black life and the, um, 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 and the um, novel, <coughs> question is, what if we cannot but experience the death of others? If this is, and I'm playing off of Sylvia Winter here, um, this is how we be human, right? If this is a different way of being in the world that is not about the constitutive abjection of the death of the other, but where the death of the other is what makes our life possible, those who did not die. <coughs> so, to conceptualize Schwarzsein, black life, um, as a relational being in the world with death, and again, death, both physical death, but the death of home, language, culture, archive, genders, and um, so on. And here, going back to the beginning a little bit, one of my favorite quotations, um, from, um, and Kara Keeling will talk about this, um, um, not about the quote, but um, um, about the um, film, um, Sun Ra's Space is the Place, at the beginning, it's after the end of the world, don't you know that yet, right? Um, what if the deaths have already occurred? What if the apocalypse has already happened is, and is continually um, happening? So it's not the question of how do we stave off the apocalypse, but how do we live with these conditions um, without letting them define us completely, right? Um, to really think about what it is that we shall do, um, we who did not die. And I believe that that, um, oh no, let me go back. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> oh. Okay, it's fine. It will be the end. Thank you. <laughs>
Hello, hello. Okay, we have um, we have five minutes for questions because we were um, Alex was a little bit faster. Is there a direct question? And Dawn has to use the restroom, so um, I gotta use this break. Any questions? Maybe I could ask about the intimate experience with the life of um, the one who has died that you spoke about. And I'm wondering what that has to do with mourning or if it's something else. I don't quite know what it is yet, but I'm, uh, I definitely know that it's not melancholia. <laughs> Because I, I, I think, um, and, and there's been this, this recent, there, there was this recent essay that was sort of talking about um, black studies becoming melancholic at a certain, um, um, at, a, at, a, um, um, at, a, at a certain point. And that's not really what it is um, um, about for me. And I think, yes, mourning is a part of it, but I think mourning localizes it and it makes it into um, something that happens right after that death. But I guess my point is, is that death is something that's ongoing. And it's not only about the death of loved ones or family members, but also about the um, 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 the death of all these other um, 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 of, of all these other um, um, factors. And I think that we we tend to think of um, if we think about, for instance, contemporary patterns of migration, we don't tend to um, think about them in the same way that we say the Middle Passage, where it's really clear you can't practice your religion, your brother is not your brother, your sister is not your sister, etc., and so on. But these contemporary patterns of migration also entail these other kinds of death, right? And I, I, I think um, in the beginning I struggled a little bit with the whole death aspect because it does seem to have sort of this apocalyptic um, um, dimension um, 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 to it. But what it is that I'm really trying to, um, I'm, I'm try trying to um, um, work out is, is how do we think about death not as an end but actually as this beginning, right? And, and, not, only, and, and not as an absolute thing but something that happens somewhere in between, right? That, that we have to come to grips with beyond mourning um, 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 the, um, 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 the, um, um, the death because we go on living, right? Um, and how do, how do we take that um, with us without um, either um, having some kind of melancholic attachment to it or completely, um, um, completely um, repressing it, so to speak? Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean to steal the microphone right out of your hands to ask a question. Um, briefly, then, could you maybe pass some comment on what it means specifically for the book to have been set in Scotland and some of the things that are at stake in terms of broadening the discourse of blackness um, to other locations such as Scotland and the Netherlands and the tension between generalizability and hyperspecificity of the, of the ontic that you've laid out? No, I think it's, it's significant, uh, but perhaps not in, in the way that one would um, expect. I think that the death and, and the kind of um, idea of unbelonging is really heightened, right, because of the, um, of, of the Scottish context. And I mean, there's also, there's so many different levels to the novel, right, um, that, that I um, 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 can't, uh, couldn't go into. But I mean, there's also this kind of tension of, for instance, Joss holding on to Scottishness and being very, very particular about being Scottish and not being English, right? Um, and of course, there's a kind of colonial history between Scotland and, um, 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 and, and, and England. And I think that that just gives it more, um, 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 more um, layers. But then I also think, yes, it is hyper-specific. And it's also, it's part of um, Jackie Kay's autobiography. And she's talked about wanting to find a way to narrate her story, again, where there were no other stories that she could tell. And one place she looked was um, um, what, what was the um, US and, um, um, and, and, and black culture there. So I think 
making, um, um, and of course she tells a different story, for instance, about the jazz men than other people, um, the other people would. So I think that that also enables her to tell that um, story, right? It's part of creating your own family, um, 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 fa family um, um, tree. And, and I think clearly it's not generalizable, but what I'm, what I want from the novel or to do with the novel is to really take that as one model of how to creatively um, recreate oneself in the face of um, unbelonging and, um, 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 and all these different forms of, um, of, 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 of death, right? So, thank you. <laughs>